Welcome back to Tiffany University Dragon Radio Live. Coming to you live from the Pioneer Mill Restaurant here in Tiffin, Ohio. If you'd like more information on Tiffany University, go to www.tiffin.edu. More information on Tiffany University Athletics by going to gotiffindragons.com. All right, we're going to talk some golf now, men's and women's golf. We're going to start off here with uh, Coach Darby Rogo of the Tiffany University Men's Golf Club, the longest tenured head coach on campus. Coach Rogo, thanks for joining us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Russ. Thanks for having us. Oh, well, we've done this a few times, haven't we? Uh, more than once. Yeah, and Rudy, I know he's giving you a hard time telling you to keep it, uh, keep it short and everything, but you got to cover two sports with Blake not being able to be here. So, Rudy, we're sorry, but you're going to hear a whole lot of Darby today. Yeah, well, he is my good mate, so I, I take the ribbing from him. <laughs> well, the reason I want to start with golf is everybody looks out the windows. It makes you long for summertime, and you know a lot of us who are not collegiate athletes, one of the things we get to do in the summertime to pretend we're an athlete of some sort is get out on the golf course. So thanks for uh, volunteering to go first. No problem. I, I enjoy pretending to be an athlete myself, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your kids. Why don't you uh, just give us a general overview about uh, what you have uh, coming back, uh, what they did in the fall, and what you got looking forward to here in the spring. Well, you know, if you look at our roster, we're very young this year uh, with only one senior, and he's actually a fifth-year senior in Corey Martinez, mm -hmm. who's been a tremendous leader for us this year. He's played in every event. I'm really proud of the effort that he's put in in his last year. Um, but after that, I mean, it's nine juniors, six freshmen, five, uh, I'm sorry, six sophomores, five freshmen, and that's the varsity and the, and the sub-varsity combined. Uh, but at any given time this year, we've had one junior, one senior, and three freshmen in the lineup. So the fall, we, we, we took our beating a little bit. You know, we did not uh, play very well at the conference championship and uh, a little disappointed in some of our efforts early in the season. But we've been working very hard here in the uh, spring. You know, we're less than 20 days away from our first event uh, in Nevada, Las Vegas. So uh, this spring, we need to really play well because we're kind of outside looking in right now on NCAA postseason where a year ago at this point, we were number five in the region yeah. and it was pretty much locked up. So it's a little different for us this year. And, and uh, But I like the uh, talent that we have on paper. It may be the most talented team I've ever had. You know, it, it's really gonna take a yeoman's effort though this spring with the events that we have to um, uh, launch ourselves into the postseason, which I think we will do. What does it take for your young kids to take what looks great on paper and actually make it into production on the course? Well, you know, the hardest part, I think, f for any athlete, not just in golf, but you talk to any of the coaches in here, were those high school seniors making the transition into college athletics. Sure. You know, at 18 years old, you, you think you got the world, you know, by the, by the tail, but you start playing against 21, 22-year-old men and women, it's a different game. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, the biggest difference is most of the high school players are playing at 65, 6,600 yards. You know, Russ, if we play at a golf course under 7,200 yards, it's not a real tournament. And uh, so that extra distance is a big deal because you're not hitting driver wedge on every hole. And so dealing with that mentally, that it, you know, it takes, you know, a different aspect of the game. Uh, for us, it's just repetitions. You know, I mean, you look at Corey's a great example. You know, he has not left the lineup in the last two years, but his first two years was a huge transition for him. By the time he got into his redshirt junior year, I mean, he's one of the top players on our team, and this year he's, you know, he's playing the 2-3 for us. And he's just a different mentality. And I think the hardest part is, is understanding that you, know, you might have been the best player on your high school team, yeah. but everybody you're competing with was also the best player on their team. So I mean, our foreman, Luke Schlischer, who is a tremendous sophomore, he finished third at the state championship in high school. And he missed a couple events this fall because he wasn't ready to go. And, and you, you, you know, there's no days off. And he, you have to learn that. You brought up the mental part of the game of golf. And the physical part can be a challenge because, if you said, like the repetition. It's so easy to get off of your game a little bit, your swing, get off a little bit. What's the biggest challenge for your young athletes? Is it the mental side or is it the physical side? I think more than anything, it's the mental side. At this point, they know how to play golf. They know how to swing the golf club. We'll make some adjustments in their swing and we'll get them to, you know, do a couple things that maybe help them be more consistent, but it's the course management. It's the way you approach the game that really separates the guys who are all conference and the guys who are just playing on, on a roster. And uh, right now, I mean, we, every Monday, uh, in fact, we finished up a session today, we have mental training. You know, we spend about an hour talking about how you can be a better golfer on the golf course, and really it's controlling your controllables. It's controlling your emotions. Um, when you get stressed out, how do you react to that? Some guys shut down. That's four or five holes that they didn't play well. Yeah. And next thing you know, you, your round's over and you shot 78 when you could have easily you know, gotten a 74 out of it. Is that the hardest thing for the young people to do that 
put that last shot behind you and worry about the next one. With, without a doubt. Part. I mean, and it's not just the college golfers. I mean, you see the PGA guys oh, struggle with it. With it. Uh, everybody in this room that plays golf has trouble having a short-term memory. I mean, in golf, the hardest thing to do is is forget about the shot you just hit. And honestly, it's the one thing you have to do. Whether you hit it well or we hit it bad, it doesn't matter. You can't change it. You've got to move forward. I think that's one thing that people don't realize, too, is that, yeah, you do need to put that bad shot behind you to get ready for the next shot, but you can't glow on the last good shot either because that really doesn't matter when you step up to the ball. To rest There's your no doubt shot. about it. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of uh, amateurs make, we put too much value on a bad shot and we don't value our good shots enough. Okay. You know, we, we, we overvalue that bad shot and we undervalue our good ones and it makes no sense. What's the strength of your team this year? <sighs> Boy, we t I mean, we are very talented. Um, we got guys that um, hit the ball a long way. We've got guys who have great short game. I mean, every year I want our identity to be a team that chips and putts very well. Yeah. And we do that very well. We're just not hitting enough greens right now. Our greens and regulation is down about three per guy, um, you know, for the on average compared to a year ago and uh, honestly the team that we had a year ago is one of our best teams in the history of the school and I don't think talent wise th that team is as good as the one that we have we're just young so is it for your team to be successful here in March April May is it hitting those greens and regulations we need to key? hit more greens and regulation I mean Tyler Moranvo who plays our one man averaged a 74 last year and he was first or second team all conference he's currently averaging a 77 I mean you look at his stats, he averaged 12 and a half greens around last year, he's averaging eight. That's four more shots per round and that's, that's the difference and that's why we're not as competitive as we were because our one man is four shots worse than he should be. And you guys get started uh, next up is March 3rd at the Las Vegas uh, Desert Classic, March uh, 2nd and 3rd. So go there, then you go to South Carolina, and then uh, you let the weather decide how much golf you get in after that. Well, you know, we do start off with a pretty good schedule, and uh, I take a lot of ribbing from a lot of the coaches. And you to Scotland last fall. So We're going to points. Scotland again this summer. So, um, you know, we, we, uh, we do travel very well, and I know Coach Goff likes to give me a hard time, <laughs> and Rudy likes to give me a hard time, and I, I'm okay with that. But uh, getting to Las Vegas is, is important for us. We host that tournament in Myrtle Beach, so we need to play well there. Anytime you're in charge of an event, you want to represent your, your program well. Well, Blake DeBrain can't be here today, the women's golf coach here at Tiffany University. There's some familiarity with yourself with the women's, with the mm -hmm. women's team as well. He uh, jotted down some notes for me. Uh, Abby Martin, senior golfer, he says he's really the team leader. But Lauren Harris cut seven to 10 strokes off from last year. How difficult is that for a golfer to do? I don't care what level you're at, to, oh. to almost take off double digit strokes is amazing. Yeah. You know, her work ethic has really changed. And I, I will tell you this, I give Blake all the credit for that. You know, he has come in and he has done a great job in his, um, uh, really his first year coaching the women. Um, you know, he helped Dana when she was the coach a couple years ago and he played for me and he was an all-conference player for me. Um, he's actually, you know, uh, in all sense of the terms, he's a professional himself because he's won some tournaments. Um, but the leadership that he's provided and the guidance that he's given the ladies, and they've really bought in, I, I couldn't be more proud of him, especially as a former player of mine. Um, but what he did is he, he gave the girls a good game plan. You know, Abby is a great leader for them. She has a lot of tournament experience. She was one of the young ladies that was fortunate enough to go to Scotland last year with the, the international team. Uh, she had a great, you know, you know uh, represented us well over there. All the Dragons golfers that played in Scotland really represented us well. Um, but he, he got Lauren to buy in, you know, um, he got her to buy into the idea of course management. You know, she now knows there's certain clubs you hit at certain times. Yeah. And because of that, she's not putting herself in trouble. She's not always hitting driver off the tee. She's hitting three wood and getting into play. She may have a longer second shot, but he's also improved her short game. So if she misses the green, she's making fours and fives instead of six, seven, and eight. And that's the difference. Yeah. And, and if you can turn a seven into a five and you do that four or five times in a round, that's how you cut off eight or eight or nine shots. We don't all play disciplined, smart golf, though, do we? Well, that's why we're amateurs. <laughs> that's right. Well, the uh, the uh, lady golfers for Tiffany University are preparing for the Spring Kentucky Perry Park Invite, as well as the Ohio, uh, the ODU Invitational, Walsh Invitational, and the GLIAX Myrtle Beach for spring break as well. So very busy time for the golfers here on campus at Tiffany University. Anything else, uh, Coach Rogo, before we let you go? No, I just want to uh, wish everybody in the spring this year uh, much success. Hopefully the weather changes for us. Uh, I know that uh, we had great representation by all of our fall sports, and I hope that us in the spring can continue that. Well, continue success, Coach Rogo. You always make time out for me, so I appreciate that. Let's give a big round of applause for Coach Darby Rogo as he's representing both men's and women's golf here for the Tiffany University Dragons.
We're going to step aside and take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk women's lacrosse and softball. This and more coming away next. This is Tiffany University Dragon Radio Live on the Tiffany University Dragon Radio Network. Welcome back to Tiffany University Dragon Radio Live, coming to you live from the Pioneer Mill Restaurant here in Tiffin. Our spring sports preview. Let's thank our sponsors once again for bringing this quality program. The sponsors include the Pioneer Mill Restaurant, Ralph's Joy of Living in Tiffany and in Fremont, Seneca Hills Golf Course, State Farm Insurance at Lapes Office, Dyer Seeds, Tiffany Ace Hardware, Viewpoint Graphics, CF Professionals Incorporated, Gary Gruce's office, Marco's Pizza, the Ohio Mutual Insurance Group, Jim Kennedy's office. Well, she's been excited all day and we're getting ready to get on the radio. Coach Erica Brown of the Tiffany University Women's Lacrosse Program. Coach Brown, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Hey, a big round of, hey, I heard a round of applause start. Let's give her a big round of applause, everybody up there. You got your whole team here. Well, first of all, Coach Brown, why don't you introduce your student athletes who you brought up here with you? Um, we have uh, senior uh, defender Sarah, Ga Sarah Gowan. We have uh, junior attacker Alexis M McMillan. But I'm nervous. Um, well, maybe if the team wasn't up there, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, and we have junior goalkeeper Jessica Bombard. Well, Jessica, Alexis, and Sarah, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Dragon Radio Live. Coach, let's talk a little bit about uh, lacrosse. Still a very young program here at Tiffany University. Talk a little bit about uh, what you have coming back from last year's team. And then talk a little bit about the recruits you brought in. Uh, we pretty much return everyone from last year. I mean, we do like lose a big attacker in Ali Quas, but we pretty much return all of our major scores from last year. Um, you know, our goalkeeping is pretty solid. We brought in another good goalie in uh, Kaylee Misano. Uh, we have seven freshmen that are gonna probably see a lot of time on the field this year. Is there a big transition? We talked about it with Coach Yoga earlier about that transition from high school into college. Is that a big transition for your freshmen coming in and making that change to the uh, Division II college level? I think so. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen our girls kind of around campus and stuff, black and blue marks all over their yeah, arms. Sure. So it's a lot more physical of a game in the college uh, level and a lot faster too. So I think it's just a matter of kind of adjusting to the fast physical pace of college. Is it, when you think about lacrosse, do you think about the keys to success? Does it start in net and it work its way out from there? I would say this. Um, Bomb, you can take this question. Uh, being a goalie yourself, so. What was the question? Does it start from the goalie do you, feel, do you feel that the success for a lacrosse team starts in net with the goalkeeper and then work your way out? Yes. If you're a goalkeeper, you got to say yes. Um, I feel like it's a team effort. It does start on the clear because then obviously I can't score, but if I do save it, then I do depend on my team to carry the ball up the field and, in fact, score. Well then, Lexi, I guess you're next then. Talk a little bit about, you're, you're an attacker, correct? Yes. All right, yeah. talk a little bit about uh, playing, um, playing of offense in lacrosse. How important is it, you, do you guys kind of like the pace setters when you're out there on the field, getting up early on the team, making it easier on the defense and the goalie? Um, yeah, because if we force it and lose the ball, then our defense is playing longer and they get tired. So if we can control the pace of the game, then we can control pretty much everything. So you guys are good at this. We went from goalie to defense, in, or to, um, to attacker, and then you brought up the defense, so that brings us to Sarah. Sarah, talk a little bit about playing, playing defense on, uh, in the lacrosse field. Playing defense is just very intense. There's a lot of hard work, and the, when the attack is moving, it makes it really hard for the defense to keep up. So like Lexi said, when the attack doesn't pace themselves, it makes it really hard on the defense and then everybody gets tired so it, it makes it a lot easier for the defense when the attack can hold the ball move it around and make things happen talk a little bit about your time here at tiffany university what uh, some of the highs that you've had on the lacrosse field well i only started playing as a sophomore so this is only my third year playing ever but as you never played to... before you played at tiffany university what no. was it that made you want to start well i one of the players that was already on the team said, hey, we need players, come out, you're athletic. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so you I fell picked in love it up. With it? I fell in love with it right away. It's so a great game. It is, it's really fun, it's really fast paced, and it's just a good atmosphere to be around. All right, both of you young ladies as well, what's some of the uh, highs that you've had as a uh, lacrosse player at Tiffany University? Um, I think making it to the championship game last year was probably, um, it was unexpected, I guess. So. Uh, Anne? <laughs> All right. Um, I definitely think, as corny as it sounds, like a majority of my friends that I've made throughout college have been my teammates, and I feel like that's the best way to make friends is because they understand what's like what you're going through when you're playing, and then what you're going through when you're not. I don't think that's corny at all. I think that's fantastic. All right, Coach Brown, uh, what are your strengths when you look at your your kids this year? 
what are your strengths that could lead your team to success? I think our defense is really strong this year. Uh, we kind of moved some kids around. Sarah actually played a lot of attacks, attack last year. Shannon Lubin played attack. We moved her back to defense this year. Um, freshman Randy Kastner came in. Our defense is a lot, lot stronger. Uh, we communicate a lot more. Again, our goalie situation is really good. Defense is good. A lot of options to the midfield. Midfield's going to be really, really strong for us this year. Um, and I think overall on attack, our lacrosse IQ is a lot better than last year. So we're able to kind of manage clock a little better, manage our time a little better, um, know when to push ball, know when to you know, slow it down a little bit. So I think overall lacrosse IQ is a lot better. So I think that's going to be lead us into like a really good kind of foundation for everything. When, you, when you're looking for kids to play lacrosse, is it that high IQ you're looking for or is it the speed and you figure you can teach at IQ? What is it that you look for? Um, a lot of factors. Lacrosse IQ is a big one. I think reaction to things is a big one. I think for a lot of us coaches out here, um, it's easy to make mistakes on the field or on the court, but how kids react to the mistakes they make, I think that's kind of a big, big factor in recruiting. Uh, one last thing for you, Coach. I know how much you love doing this. We'll get you out the hot seat here. But uh, one last thing, you know, if you could entice some folks who are listening to get on down to Frost County and watch your girls play lacrosse, what could you tell them about the way you guys play that would entice them to come see you? If you guys like basketball, uh, if you guys like football, if you like soccer, all those things are pretty much lacrosse. So there's hitting involved. <laughs> um, we do get card up for it. It's back and forth, up and down. So if you guys liked not a lot of downtime in your sports, definitely come out and watch us. Yeah, I love lacrosse. It's a great game. How about a big round of applause for Coach Erica Brown, Sarah, Jessica, and Lexi. And let's bring up softball next. Coach Nickerson and the softball team. All right, Coach Jeff Nickerson of the Tiffany University softball team here to join us. Coach, thanks for joining us here on Dragon Radio. Thank you. Thanks All for right. having us. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, your team this year. Talk a little bit about uh, what you got coming back and what you expect out of your squad this year. Oh, we have um, basically bought all of our starters back this year, um, so we're looking forward to this year. We've worked hard, um, changed the lineup a little bit, moved some people around, and try to find the best uh, lineup that we can get out there for us. If you had to move some kids around, is that to be able to get your nine best softball players on the field? Absolutely. That's yeah. what you got to do, right? Um, yeah. Got to have your best hitters out in that lineup for you and your best defenders. So, um, you know, we've moved some people around and we'll, we'll see um, kind of how the year, even though we have almost everybody returning, it's still kind of like a new team you're putting out there because everybody's going to be in somewhere different. Why don't you introduce your student athletes in beside us? Uh, this is Miss Katie Toomey. Hi. Hi, Katie. Thanks for joining us here on Dragon Radio. Thanks. Tell us a bit about yourself. What position do you play? Um, I'm a senior, and I'm a utility player. I don't really know where I play. <laughs> Where's she going to be playing this year, Coach? A little bit everywhere? Uh, right. Probably a little bit everywhere with second base right now. A little second base right now, so we'll see. Was that the position you played when you came to Tiffany University? Um, I started playing third, and then I've played everywhere on the field besides pitcher and catcher, basically. So. Right, what are your strengths? Is your strength on the defensive side, or is your strength um, as a hitter? I would say all around. I'm like just a good So you're athlete. good at everything you're saying? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. So. You got nine kids who can say that, Coach? Or yeah. all that we're good at everything? I got 18 that can say that. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. All right, now, softball, it all starts with pitching. I'm sure. Talk a little bit about what you have on the mound this year. Um, we have uh, two returners. That's uh, Kelsey Arich. Uh, she's left handed. She's a sophomore. Um, she's really worked hard. She's improved immensely since she's gotten here. Um, I think a lot of that is due to the fact of uh, a great pitching coach I have this year in Melanie Hine. Um, she's really helped her out a lot. Um, so she came back after break and, and has just taken great strides. Then we have uh, Madison Yannick, who's back. She's a junior. She did a transfer um, last year. Um, she's looking really strong and, and getting a lot better every day. What's the hardest transition for a kid coming out of high school, coming to this level? Is it the pitchers facing the hitters, or is it the hitters facing the pitchers? I think it's probably the, the pitchers facing the hitters, because in high school, um, a lot of it has to, you know, you, you're going to see one or two, maybe three good players um, offensively on those teams. But now, you know, they're in a lineup where all nine batters uh, are, are going to be extremely strong. So, you know, for a pitcher, they can't take any, anybody off and, and sit back and relax a little bit. Um, they have to come at it, every, you know, every nine. Well, you guys get started later on this month, head down south, going to North Carolina to get things started. Uh, what do your kids need to do to be successful on in that initial trip towards the end of this month? 
Um, just just play well as a team and probably come out and hit the ball strong. You know that's really what's going to help us. And anytime you, you hit well, um, it, it really helps your your entire team to get going. You know, make, gives everybody a little bit of confidence, and um, you know that, that'll, that'll just help us carry out through the rest of the year. All right, we heard about the coach things, Katie. What do you think when you think about your squad this year, the softball team? What do you think the keys to your team being successful are? Um, I think overall, like we're a really good defensive team, and we have really good pitching, so we can hold teams to lower scores. Well, so that should keep you in games. Yeah, and, that you know, keeps us in the hits. games. And then throughout the lineup, like our whole team's full of um, really talented hitters, so we keep teams to low scores and runs, and then we score more runs than them. How about on the hitting side? Are you guys more of a power team or a speed team? We're more of a mixture. Yeah, um, yeah we are. We got a little bit of everything. So, well, sounds like it should yeah. be a successful campaign then. It, it better be. It better right. be. Yes. Yeah. He's in his sixth season as the head coach of Tip University softball teams. His name is Jeff Nickerson. His student athlete Katie Toomey joining us here. How about a big round of applause for Jeff and Katie here on Dragon Radio? All right, we need to step aside and take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk some tennis and the Pioneer Mill Restaurant. All this and more coming to you next here on Tiffany University Dragon Radio on the Tiffany University Dragon Radio Network. Welcome back to Tiffany University Dragon Radio Live, coming to you from the Pioneer Mill Restaurant here in Tiffany, Ohio. So far, we've talked some golf, we've talked lacrosse, we've talked softball. Now, let's talk some tennis. Joined now with Tiffany University head coach of both the men's and women's teams, Phil Conley. Coach Conley, how are you doing, sir? Great, thank you. So uh, why don't you introduce your two student athletes uh, to sitting to your left. Uh, to my left is uh, Craig Martin uh, from Chardon, Ohio, and Kyle Johnson from Avila, Indiana. Okay, uh, Craig and Kyle, thank you so much for joining us here on Dragon Radio. Coach, tell us a little bit about these two young men. Um, well, Craig was one of my first recruits uh, when I started coaching, so it's kind of uh, bittersweet to have him here as a senior. Um, he's a captain. He's really worked hard to, uh, you know, get that um, – uh, to become a captain, he's uh, really had some big wins for us uh, in the past few years. Uh, so he's a great captain. And uh, Cal Johnson's a junior. Um, and he's really he's really rose up through the ranks on our team. Uh, he can play anywhere between one, two, uh, singles, three. Right now he's right now he's three and four, but he can play anywhere in the lineup. So I'm really happy to have him on the team. I think tennis at the at Tiffany University is one of the sports that really benefited greatly from the Heminger Center. You know that because when weather would make a difference, you know, it would be a difference maker in a match, the things you guys had to go through to be able to play. Were you guys here for prior to the Heminger Center? Uh, yes, half the time I was here was before we had the Heminger Center, and half the time is when we had it. Talk a little bit about how much of a difference it is having that on campus. Well, it's really huge for us because in the winter we used to have to go to Sandusky for practice mm -hmm. my freshman and sophomore year. So it's about half of the practice time, two hours for driving, then two hours for practice. So it's really nice to be able just to practice whenever we want to, really. And then it's really helped us, I think, a lot for our matches as well. You feel the same way, Kyle? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just helps, you know, all around with our homework and eating. I mean, we all we all we, we always have a problem with that, you know, trying sure. to figure out the time to eat and homework and everything. It's just tough to balance everything as a student athlete, but it makes it nice now to have the Heminger Center. Yeah, Craig, how important is it to be a captain this year on this team? Oh, this is my second year as a captain, and it's uh, really I feel like it helps out a lot because we have a lot of freshmen this year, so I really help. I think I've helped them kind of understand what's like to transition, especially because a lot of them are international students too. Kind of adjust to, to being in the United States, is, it's kind of a big challenge for them. So I've helped them academically and I also help them kind of with their tennis too, so. Well, Coach, uh, you recently had a uh, match at Bellamine University and you guys won that match 6-3. Tell us a little bit how the kids fared. Uh, going into the match, I knew it was going to be a tough match. They beat uh, Grand Valley and a lot of the GLIAC schools last year. So uh, it was a great way to start the season. Uh, we went out in doubles, and all three courts, we had uh, no breaks to serve. And, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at court one, court two, court three. Court three breaks first, uh, which is really big in tennis. If you can hold your serve the whole time, you're not going to lose. Yeah. Uh, so they, they actually broke first, so it was looking really, really good. We actually ended up losing at third doubles, losing our serve actually the next uh, next game, uh, losing 9-7. But uh, one and two doubles, as soon as they got their break, uh, there was no turning back. They just kept serving really well. Well, next month you guys will go on your, your trip down south. And that's pretty important for you. You'll be playing a Division One program while you're on that trip. How important is that trip going to be for your kids? Uh, spring break is the most important thing that we can do for our program. Uh, we get to go out and play outside, obviously. 
uh, usually under really, really good weather, 70 and 80s. Uh, we play really, really talented teams. Uh, we also play uh, University of Charleston, which is uh, another really, really great tennis program. Uh, so, you know, these matches are really going to help us for the GLIAC. Uh, as you can see now, too, we play some GLIAC matches before that. Uh, they're ready for it now, but that's uh, that right there is uh, the heart of our season. Besides Tiffany University, where else is the strength in the GLIAC lie? Um, I would definitely say Northwood. Uh, Fair State has the number one uh, team uh, this year as far as tennisrecruiting.com goes. Uh, they recruited the best program for um, freshman year, I wow. guess you could say. Uh, so they look like they could possibly win the conference. I mean, we're, of course, uh, hoping that we can do that too. So uh, we're young, uh, three freshmen in the lineup right now. So we're going to see what we can do with that. All right, Craig, what's your strengths? Is it the serve? Is it, uh, what is it? Well, mine's uh, conditioning. Yes. I play all day, run around on the court. Kyle, how about yourself? What's your strength on the court? Um, right now it's been my serve, um, especially in doubles. It, it really propels us. Um, me and my partner are playing one double, so that this serve is one of the biggest things and that, that really propelled us um, Friday night. So, How much of a challenge is it playing doubles compared to playing singles? When you're on singles, you know, you're responsible for the entire court yourself. Kind of a, a, a different game really in, when you're playing tennis. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just returning. That's that's one of the most important things in doubles and you only have a specific window to hit and if you don't hit your spot, you're about ready to hit your partner pretty much. I was say, so, how many times have you yeah. hit your partner in the back of the head and <laughs> no. trying to return to serve? <laughs> try, try not to or do how that how many times have much. you been hit in the back of the head when your <laughs> partner's trying to return to serve? Well, one so far this practice, but that's all right. <laughs> but that's, a, that's, pretty the, that's probably the toughest part of it. Well, you got a young team here at the uh, men's tennis program. Let's talk a little bit about the women now. So I'll talk a bit about uh, where they're at. I think they're ranked in the region right now. Is that right? Yeah, currently we're ranked sixth in the region. Uh, so that's the first time we've ever been regionally ranked for a women's program. And I, I think we can uh, move to the national rankings this spring. You have a pretty young team too, right? Yeah, we do lose uh, one girl this spring, uh, Malika Messi, uh, which is, uh, she's a captain. She's a fantastic player. She's top 10 in the Midwest. Uh, so losing her is very, very tough. Uh, but we have uh, supporting cast behind her that's really going to be able to uh, pick up the program next say, year. say when you're losing somebody that important, but you're also bringing back the freshman of the year in the conference, that's got to help maintain what she had going beforehand. Yeah, the, my anticipation is uh, Caroline, who re uh, receives freshman of the year, will pl be playing number one for me next year. Um, and, you know, I think she could have the same results, uh, you know, where she played two and three this year going undefeated. She's not lost a GLIAC match or uh, a competition yet. So I could see her doing that at uh, one singles too. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the GLIAC Women's Coach of the Year. Let's give Coach Conley a round of applause for that. All right, one last question here, Coach. This pertains to both your men and women's. What are your guys' keys to success this coming spring? Uh, definitely the hard work. Um, in years past on both programs, it's uh, this is my fifth season coaching. Um, you know, we were we were solid when I first started coaching, but there's uh, some big changes, obviously, and the Heminger Center is the uh, the number one thing. My students can go in there, condition. Uh, we practice a lot more, and it's preparation. Uh, before, you know, when we were traveling two hours to, uh, or two hours total of travel time, and then two hours practice, we're looking at four, four and a half hours a day just for practice, so it's preparation. And like Kyle said, that cut, cut out a lot of homework time as well, and they are student athletes to begin with before they are athletes. So let's give a big round of applause to Kyle, Craig, and head coach Phil Conley at Tiffany University men's and women's tennis programs. Welcome back to Tiffany University Dragon Radio Live, our final segment coming to you live from the Pioneer Mail Restaurant right here in Tiffin. We've had a chance to talk golf, we've talked lacrosse, softball, tennis, the Pioneer Mail Restaurant. Now let's talk some track and field. Coach Jeremy Croy joined us here the track and field program. Coach Croy, how are you doing today, sir? A little cold, little cold. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and grab that one real quick. Grab that microphone there, and then Coach Croy, why don't you introduce everybody sitting to your left? This is Coach Ray Robinson. He coaches our, our throwers, uh, senior Stephen Lindsay, senior Ashley DeWitt, senior Dominic Colvin, and senior Taylor Deskins. Well, thank you everybody for joining us here on Tiffany University Dragon Radio. Pleasure having everybody here. Well, Coach, let's talk a little bit about uh, the track and field program. You've second longest tenured coach, I think, here at Tiffany University, just like a year behind Coach Rogo. Seems like you've been here for quite a while. You still enjoying your time? 
Uh, absolutely. I was going through a little stale period until we got to Heminger Center, but uh, we're definitely back, uh, back on board acting, now. You were just acting, just trying to get to Heminger Center, weren't you? Last time we talked, we talked about the indoor and the outdoor track and field, and you definitely told me that you preferred the outdoor over the indoor, but uh, talk a little bit about the transition coming out of the outdoor season into the indoor season here in the spring. Well, we, um, I think what allows us to be very successful outdoors is, is the indoor facility. And by having the indoor facility, we're able to focus on a lot of outdoor events that, that other teams are not able to do. Uh, we throw hammer in there, we throw discus in there. Um, we do a lot of ja javelin drills. Uh, we can do a lot of hurdling. We can do basically everything we need to do outside. We can do it inside. So uh, it, it makes the transition pretty seamless. All right, Coach Lindsay, why don't we talk to you for a, a moment here? It's Coach Robinson. Oh, Robinson? All right, what does that say, Steve? This Lindsay? is Steve. Oh, that's fine. Okay, we'll start with you, Coach Robinson. Uh, talk a little bit about what you, uh, what you do with the program. I'm just a throws coach. I write all the strength and conditioning um, for all the, all the events in, from the weight room aspect. Um, you know, just technically in the, in the throws and in the weight room and that sort of thing. That's pretty much it. You see a lot. What do you see out of the, uh, the throws this year with, the, with this uh, team? Is, there a lot of, uh, is that part of the strengths of the program? I would think so. We have uh, five women ranked in the top 20 in the country in the shot put, um, two in the top 10 in the weight throw, um, and then Steve and a couple other guys that have hit a national provisional qualifying mark as well. All right, let's talk to Steve now here. Not Coach Lindsay, but let's talk to Steve Lindsay. Tell us a little bit about what you do with the Tiffany University track program. Well, I got here in 2010, and I wasn't really that great of a thrower when I got here, but Coach Robinson really turned me around. and. We also have another throwing coach, Nolan Hill, that he's done a lot for me for the program. And I put my faith in the program, and it really paid off so far. What do you think it was that turned you around? Uh, my dedication to the program. I wasn't really sure about my lifting regiments or how I should train, but they really showed me that they, their knowledge of what the throwing aspect of the track is, and it really helped me. All right, and I think uh, to, to your left is Ashley, is that right? Yes. All right, Ashley, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, pretty much the same as Steve. C pretty much covered it all. Uh, I actually do shot, hammer. I'm not a discus thrower. I'm not very good at that. Um, Steve pretty much said about the coaches, like the thrower I am today and the person actually is because of Ray Nolan and Coach Croy. And we're lucky to have as many coaches as we have and the, the knowledge that they have. We're lucky to have that. Is it, how much of a benefit is you for as a thrower to be able to work at a Hemminger Center over the wintertime? It's a lot better than what it was. We were practicing in a barn. There were cows. And we were practicing at the YMCA. So when the Heminger Center got built, it was a benefit. Right, and Dominic, you're next over there. Tell us a bit about what you do. Um, I do the four and the 200 mainly, and relays also. So you're a speed man? Uh, not the speed man, but. <laughs> One of? <laughs> One of them. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about your time here at Tiffany University and uh, you know, reflect a little bit back and take a look forward here at this coming spring. Um, I got here in 09 and we were in the mall. We moved to another mall and then we finally were able to have the Hemi here, which was a big difference because we were, we were basically running on like mats. And it's, now to have a track is. It just helps so much. That's a world-class track in that facility as well. Yes, yes, definitely. All right, and Taylor? Taylor, tell us a little bit about that. That ready to go. Tell us a little bit about what you do in the track and field program. Um, I'm like Dom. I'm a sprinter. I run a 200 and 400 as well. And want me to tell you about me? Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your time here at Tiffany University and uh, what you expect out of yourself this spring. Um, I got to Tiffany in 2010. and. Uh, I feel the same way, like I think to him was a good idea. Well, we was outside practicing in the cold certain days and we also practiced in the mall, so it's real beneficial, it's real helpful, real All thankful right. for it. And Coach Croy, uh, you got some, uh, some of your student athletes uh, have uh, obtained some school records this year as well as uh, being ranked nationally? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> we started the years off, I think, ranked 24th on the guys' side and 43rd on the women's side. And then after the first week of the season, we bumped it up to uh, our guys were ranked 13th in the country and women were ranked 15th in the country. So that's the first time we've ever both been ranked in the top 15. That's a huge uh, jump. What do you attribute that to? We just had a good, good opening two weekends. And, um, and a couple people, you know, track stats, it's easy to, to just look on paper and see oh, they're a little better than we thought they were going to be. We had some red shirts that uh, didn't participate last year 
that came back, fifth year seniors that are in grad school now. And um, so we made that, that, that jump that we were pretty happy with that. Uh, but then we stay hungry. You know, being ranked 13th and 15th, those are both uh, the fourth. We're ranked fourth in the GLIAC. Wow. Uh, so there are That speaks volumes about yeah, the level so of competition right here in your own conference. Three other GLIAC teams ranked in the top 10. So it's, uh, it's a tough battle. I mean, we love being ranked nationally, but uh, we got to get it done in GLIAC first. So. Well, hey, you're here to perform, right? Why don't we go out there and just get it done? Now, for an athlete to... To uh, qualify for nationals, it's all about the times they said, right? It's not yeah. like going out and winning your meets. It's actually the number that's posted at the end of your... Yeah, you, you could go undefeated, but if you don't hit a certain distance, uh, if you don't throw it mm -hmm. a certain distance or jump a certain distance or run a certain time, uh, you don't make the nationals. So I think they take uh, top 16, 17, 18 times distances in the country in each event. So uh, well, hopefully we have about 15 national qualifiers uh, when all said and done in three weeks. Well, that was my next question. How many national qualifiers are you expecting this year? So around 15? I think that's a good good estimate. All right. Well, Coach Jeremy Croy and the track and field team here at Tiffin University, let's give them a big round of applause and let's welcome up our baseball team. And Joe, this is uh, something you're used to, buddy. You used to be the uh, the host of this program. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back. So uh, thanks for having me. And why don't you just take over? Definitely. No, I'm I'm going to let you do it. You're right. doing a great job and. I want to thank Pioneer Mill for having us, and it's a great venue for this. We've done it upstairs, now we're doing it downstairs. So, um, yeah, he does a he does a great job. Scott, well, Scott said you guys had a fantastic event here last week. And touch on that a little bit. We did. We had 160 or so guests, and um, it was really nice. It uh, definitely got people together, excited about the season. So. I know our guys are excited, so it just gets, gets some people fired up. Why don't you introduce everybody to your left? Well, this is our uh, assistant coach and pitching coach, Jim Richardson, and um, senior pitcher, Joey Peretta, and senior catcher, Mario Rodriguez, and senior left-handed pitcher, Kevin Klein. So, sorry, I had to switch it up on you. Three, I know. You I wrote gave some... me three names, and none of these names are sitting up here. Well, one, I was one for three. Okay, one, one for three. three. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here. Let's... Uh, Talk to uh, to Coach uh, Richardson here. Coach, talk a little bit about uh, your background. You're the pitching coach for the Dragons, so you must have quite a background on the mound. Yes and no. Okay. Um, I've actually worked with USA Baseball since 2009. And um, additionally, I've done some scouting for the Chicago Cubs and actually took this position and left a position with the Chicago Cubs. Well, they could use some um, help. Well, yeah, <laughs> always good. <laughs> they're in uh, they're in good shape. Um, in any event, yeah, you know, I was uh, very impressed with with the university's commitment to athletics, which is demonstrated by the facilities they have here, but also their commitment to academics. And uh, yeah, it seemed like a perfect fit. You know, talk a little bit about the pitchers you have this year. Well, you know, we're going to be young, and if you take a look at our stats from last season, you know, we outscored our opponents over the course of the season. We outhit our opponents over the course of the season. We did not outpitch our opponents over the course of the season. Um, so we've done some things to solidify our bullpen, which is uh, ultimately what, you know, caused some of those mm -hmm. caused some of those losses. But uh, but in short, you know, we've. Uh, you know, we've got some arms that we can rely on, and we think that they're going to be able to uh, take this program someplace where it hasn't been before. So and it starts with a couple of these guys. All right, well, let's just move over to your left and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and uh, what you do on the baseball team. Oh, I'm Joe Peretta, senior pitcher. I'm from uh, Akron, Ohio. And uh, you're, you're a senior, you say you're a starting pitcher? Uh, yes, yes. All right, what's your strengths on the mound? You're a flamethrower? You're, uh, a, no, you're a control guy? You got movement? A, what's your strength? Definitely not a flamethrower. Uh, hit spots, you know, try to get uh, ground balls, you know, let the defense work behind me. So I know my strengths, so I try to stick to them. All right, and next? Uh, my name is Mario Rodriguez. I'm from Lincoln Park, Michigan. Uh, I'm a senior catcher. Um, to be behind the plate is a it's a big job and it's a job you have to be really consistent at and that's something I'm leaning towards and I want to be that consistent guy back there and be able to provide for my defense and offense uh, to keep us in the game and be able to score runs. So that's well, nobody most knows the pitching any better than the catcher does. That's for sure. Talk a little bit about that pitching staff and what you've seen from behind the plate. Um, like Coach Richardson said, we're pretty young, but uh, we're pretty consistent. We're getting there. We're getting to that point where everyone is getting the good idea of where to throw pitches and what we're going to call in order to get the outs on the field. And uh, I'm pretty excited, and everyone else is excited about the 
the season too. Well, sometimes as a catcher, if a pitcher you know is maybe struggling a little bit out there, they can maybe get out of their head of sorts. Is this kind of your job sometimes to go out there and get them back to where their head needs to be out there on the mound? Oh, that's that's definitely a job of the catcher. If you see a guy struggling out there, you can't just let him stay out there mm -hmm. and uh, play with his own mind. You got to really go out there and relax him and uh, talk him down and get him back in the game. All right, and. Uh, my name is Kevin Klein. I'm a senior pitcher from Stowe, Ohio, and this is my four fourth year with the program, and I'm looking to be a starter this year. I was in the bullpen my first three years, and I feel like I can contribute a lot more to the team this year now that I have a lot more experience and just learn from some of the previous guys we had. So that's why you were uh, staring Coach uh, Richardson down when he was talking about the bullpen last year? Uh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> we well, didn't have the best season last year as far as the team wise, but I think we can be a lot better this year. And Coach Richardson's done a lot with the pitching staff, so all the coaches work really hard and really excited for this season. What's he brought to the table for you specifically? Uh, a lot of the mental side, just learning how to become a more complete pitcher. Kind of had some of the pitches already there and just really polishing everything off mechanics wise. Do a lot of slow motion video work, and it's helped out a lot. All right, Coach Wilkins, talk a little bit about your team here. What's your strength? I mean, when you look at baseball, it always starts with pitching and defense. You still got to hit the ball. Where's your strengths on this team? Well, I think experience, um, even though we're going to be young, we had a lot of guys out playing this summer. And um, in turn, we have a lot of guys that are going to go out and play in leagues across the country this coming summer. So that experience and uh, those game reps, we've got a lot of highly touted freshmen. Um, like these guys said, we are young, but we're pretty talented. Um, you go around and uh, see how deep we are at many positions. We've got a guy named Cody Spires who can play the outfield, first base. He might DH for us, play third base. We don't know where, where he's going to be. All we know is his bat's going to be in the lineup. And uh, Nick Calandra is going to be uh, hopefully the everyday guy at shortstop. And, um, we, you know, we do have some guys with some, you know, we got some guys at shortstop that uh, if something happens or, God forbid, you know, we've got guys to fill in. So all of them are young, but we do have guys. We've got three guys that are competing very hard at, at second base, and uh, we're going to see what happens over there at first base because we've had some injuries, but uh, we are very deep, and we've got some guys that can swing the bat. In the outfield, and I told Coach Coleman I'd give him a hard time, um, th that's probably the only position that we haven't had any injuries in the, in the preseason. So, um, you know, we're, we're counting on him to keep those guys healthy because everywhere else we've had some nicks and some guys that, that have gone down, but we are very deep at, uh, at every position. And, you know, we got guys that can step right in and, and take the, uh, you know, take what those, uh, those guys that have gone down, we're going to provide for us. You know, we're, we're just going to plug right in and, and play as a, as a team. All right.